So let me set the stage for you. A little less than a month ago, AEW boss Tony Khan went on Ariel Hawani's podcast. That's right. Tony Khan went on Ariel's podcast. And Ariel attempted something absolutely and astoundingly outside of the realm of sanity. He actually attempted to get answers from the questions he asked. What a crazy concept when you're interviewing someone. You actually think you're going to get answers. <laughs> and all the research and all the homework that Ariel puts into his podcast. For this particular interview with Tony Khan, Ariel forgot the one biggest piece of homework and research that he needed to do. Ask himself three important questions. Is Tony Khan a good interview? Is he going to answer your questions? Is he going to treat you and your podcast with respect? The answer is a resounding no on all fronts. He is the worst interview imaginable. He answers zero questions. And he treats you and your podcast with zero respect. We know this because this is a dude that does about 10 to 12 interviews a day, every day, every week, every month of every year, and we get no information out of any of it. In fact, when the interviews are usually done, whether it's 10 minutes, a half an hour, an hour, we usually come out of the interview knowing even less than we went into the interview with. Somehow, we lose brain cells listening to Tony Khan. It's almost like he just loves to, to poke at the interviewers. Like he's, the, he's that fucking dweeb in school that thinks he, he's better than everyone else because he, he might just be smarter than everybody else, but he's still the biggest geek in class. He could still get the biggest swirly 17 times a day. But he's always going to sit there in the corner with a little smirk on his face, looking at everyone else like, I know something you don't know. And that's how he sits through his interviews, right? He just has that little smirk and they ask him questions and he just sits there with a smirk and he just can't say it. Can't say. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. Well, why not? Can you just tell us how you feel then? Nope. Not going to discuss it. How about the Yankees? Do you watch baseball? Me neither. That's Ariel. That, 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 Ariel thought he was just fucking with him. Ariel doesn't understand. This is, to this is who he is. This is what he does. Ariel thought he was inviting this guy onto his podcast to have a, a good conversation for the audience to enjoy. A podcast that would be both memorable and meaningful. Instead, Tony Khan treated it like it was just a conversation between two high school girls. He treated it like it was a therapy session on Rodeo Drive. Like they were just having a cup of coffee and shooting the shit. And Tony, Tony Khan doesn't realize that Ariel is sitting across from him just getting more and more irritated like, dude, we are on the air like this. I'm this is going out to thousands and thousands of people. It's a show. Why did you accept the invitation? Why did you come on here to waste our time? After that, we saw Ariel do something a week later, a little less than a week after that interview, that podcast. And Ariel doesn't usually do this to this extreme. He actually talked for over five minutes. He was asked the question about the podcast, and he went over five minutes. He basically cut a promo. And he talked about how the most frustrating interview he's ever cut, and he's done a lot, hundreds and hundreds. The most frustrated, that's his word, the most frustrating frustrating interview he's ever done was that Tony Khan interview. He said he could get nothing. He said, it's one thing to say, I don't want to talk about it or even legally. I can't. How are you feeling about it? Give us something. We have an audience of thousands and thousands. It ain't just us fucking sipping a coffee and, and, and smiling at one another. And, and we're about to play fucking thumb wars and maybe we'll break out the monopoly fucking uh, board. Maybe we'll do some fucking twister. Red Rover, Red Rover, send Tony Khan over. A little bit of fucking tag. 
Maybe we'll chase each other around. We'll make a fucking 24-7 title out of paper and we'll chase each other around, try to fruit roll up one another. No, there's an audience that's invested into trying to get some, some inkling of information out of you so it will be enlightening to your audience. And my audience for the podcast will go, damn, good podcast, man. That was a good guest. Uh, that was a smooth 90 minutes. No, nothing. Nothing out of this guy. And he talked about fucking, I tried to bring, Ariel says, I tried to bring up MJF. I got nothing. I tried to bring up the CM Punk. Nothing. Uh, I tried to bring up uh, Bray Wyatt. Uh, how do you feel about uh, what, uh, a dude who just came back with the competition? I got nothing. Just tell me how you feel. Just thoughts on it. I tried to bring up this. I tried to bring up that. And, it, and, it, and I heard the whole interview, by the way, before Ariel flipped out on this. I heard the whole thing. I, I watched it. And it was awkward, and I was I was feeling for Ariel, man. I felt so bad for that guy because he was trying so bad. And Tony Khan was just contradicting himself, once one after another. First he says he 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 never met Nick Khan. Then he says, oh, uh, I met him a couple of times, and I actually just recently talked to him. So then Ariel just says, what what, what did you talk about? Because he used to be my manager, so I'm just curious. Did you did you talk to him recently? Because I haven't talked to him in a while. He wouldn't even answer that. He's like, I don't want to discuss it. I don't want to talk about it. No, 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 no. I don't want you to tell us what we, you were talking about. I was just curious when you last talked to him because I haven't reached out to him in a while. I mean, Ariel was just trying to have a lighthearted moment. Like, you do. was it like two weeks ago, a month ago? Because I, I kind of want to, I haven't shot the shit with him in a while. And, and, and he just fucking guarded up. He's like, no, nah, I don't want to talk about it. Okay, so with the CM Punk thing, that's the biggest news thing. Can you just tell us a little bit about where your head's at with that, with the locker room? And you don't have to speak specifically on Punk, but uh, no, I, I can't talk about anything like that. Nope. Investigation going on, legal, blah, blah. This poor guy got nothing. So I'm just using the aerial one as, a, as an example, right? Because this happens 12 fucking times every single fucking day. Every interview that Tony Khan is in. He just fucking dodges everything. He wants to answer nothing. He sits there like the little smirky shit in school that thinks he's better and knows everything else that people around him don't know. He knows it all and they don't know shit. He's got the information and he's not going to tell you. He's got all the answers to the test. And he just sits there and he tries to hype up his little fucking shows that nobody's going to fucking watch. And then he just goes into Sports Illustrated. Now, this is a fucking... This is Sports Illustrated. Sports Illustrated interviews this guy. I don't know why they would want to. You ain't going to get shit out of it. The investigation is over. So all Sports Illustrated said was with the, with the emergence, the reemergence of Colt Cabana coming back to AEW television... What does this mean for, for Punk now? Or where does that situation now lie, right? That the investigation over, you can now talk about it. Because you use that as a crutch in all these interviews. I can't talk about it, investigation. He wouldn't even tell you how he feels about it, which is not illegal to talk about. Now the investigation's over. Sports Illustrated wants to know. And do you know what he said? The, 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 the balls on this fucking dude. The audacity to disrespect people that are taking the time to interview you and keeping you and your organization relevant. This is what Tony Khan said when asked about Cabana coming back and what it means for Punk in that whole situation. <laughs> he, nothing about CM Punk. This is what he says as, a, as an answer, and I quote, Chris Jericho has been wrestling a number of former Ring of Honor champions. He brings it to Chris Jericho all the time lately. We know that Chris Jericho is running uh, be everything behind the scenes these days. We understand. But come on, man. This cannot be the answer for everything going forward. Chris Jericho has been wrestling a number of Ring of Honor champions, competing against a number of ROH greatest stars like Claudio, Brian Danielson, Dalton Castle, Bandito, and now Cole Cabana. It's been an exciting series of matches against some great wrestlers who have legendary histories in Ring of Honor, and we're seeing the ROH stars trying to stop Jericho from desecrating that title. And Sports Illustrated is like, but what about the, 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 the punk thing, though? How about the, like, <laughs> the, the question wasn't just, hey, what's up with Cole Cabana coming back? It's, what does this now do for the punk situation? Because that's what set off CM Punk. 
Uh, don't want to talk about that. that we're we're going to focus on the, the Chris Jericho, what he's doing, and Ring of Honor, and that, that story. Man, you got to catch Rampage, because this is going to be big, because what we're doing... No, 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 that's not what Sports Illustrated asks, man. For months, you for months over a month now, since the media screen, you just shut down on anything to do with the situation. The investigation is now over. Can't you just fucking tell us something to, A, shut everyone up that is, is, that is misled... With information that is false, but two, if if you're so upset that there's all these narratives, shut it down and tell us, enlighten us. You ain't got to give us every detail. If at the bare minimum you just tell us what you're feeling, if not, why the fuck is this guy doing interviews? The disrespect that he shows these interviewers is mind-boggling. At first, I was like, hey, man, they're getting Tony Khan, right? They're being graced with AEW boss's presence. It's the opposite now. They're giving him the platform to say jack shit. Tony Khan is coming off like a pompous... Hold up, BC. Hold up. It's not a PG show, but it ain't that rated R. <laughs> we had to do a little edit there. That was a little too harsh, but he is coming across like a like a pompous puss face Paulie. How's that? He's coming across like a disrespectful prick to the most amplified of measures and a bitch boy Braden to the highest degree. And there's still a level of respect that we have for him, right? I mean, I know this is hard to hear for a lot of fans. Because we do have respect for somebody that is that, that took the time, the money, the energy, the resources to, to face Vince McMahon in competition. Uh, when a lot of people would not put up put up those type of resources, you know, he 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 did it. And that's why we want to have so much respect for the dude. But every time he opens his fucking mouth, every time he takes an interview, I, I seem to lose a little bit more. I get drained, drained from the respect that I have for him. And it gets less and less. And I don't want that. I just wish he would shut his fucking mouth every now and again, like maybe all of the time. <laughs> he needs a PR guy. We knew that from day one, right? From the inception of AEW, he has... He has not only put his own foot in his own mouth so many times, but he has hurt the roster with his words so many times. He has made the roster on so many occasions have to go into interviews themselves, go into business for themselves just to try to save face and correct uh, a, a narrative that was placed on them unjustifiably because Tony Khan just wasn't thinking about what he was saying. Instead of fucking just answering questions, he's too busy saying stupid shit that he shouldn't be saying. Maybe if he answered questions more, truthfully and honestly, and the way he's truly feeling, he would say less stupid shit. Instead, he answers nothing, goes on these long tirades, these long rants about who the fuck knows what. I mean, watch the Ariel podcast interview and... and the whole thing is just him talking about whatever he wants. He's like, he's enjoying his coffee and it's just like therapy hour. And Ariel's like, what the fuck is this guy on, first of all? What is he talking about? And can this end soon? Because you could tell nobody that interviews this guy is having a good time. Nobody. This guy thinks it's just, fu he, 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 it's, it's just a fucking... It's the time of his life that he's had. He is, he is living his best life when he, when he gets into interviews and he gets behind a microphone. And he sits smirking and he's smiling and he's like, yeah, let's talk. What do you got? What do you want to talk about? You can ask him anything. He won't give a fuck. He'll go immediately into fucking trying to pump up Rampage and why you should watch Rampage. We got three fucking title matches. We got four returns. I got three surprises. I haven't even... I got three big announcements. You're going to have to stay tuned for those. Three in one show. Big announcements are going to be made tonight, along with four returns and three title matches. All on Rampage. Check it out. 8 p.m. Uh, Pacific Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 uh, uh, South Pacific, uh, 11 Nor'Eastern Time, 12 uh, Bear Mountain Time, um, 13 o'clock... Um, strawberry time. We're covering all time zones. Rampage will be on. You don't even know. He won't answer shit. The point is, I'll wrap this up. I wanted to keep this 10 fucking minutes. That's obviously not happening. Um, to Tony Khan, I would say just stop. Just stop doing these interviews if you're not going to answer the question. Stop doing these interviews if you're not going 
to be interviewed. Stop doing the interviews if you're not going to respect the person that invited you onto their show. In the words of Jade Cargill, cut the shit, Tony. At least Tony Schiavone will answer questions like when he was asked about Chris Jericho's backstage role recently and he was honest to the T. Schiavone's a guy who you would want to ask on your show because he's going to be a fun interview. He's going to enlighten your audience. He's going to make us think. He's going to tell us some shit that we didn't know and we get more intrigued and invested. I'd rather listen to Schiavone than Khan. I am tired of this dude showing up to all these interviews and then his shows lack storylines. His shows lack larger than life characters. There's been a number of AEW talents that should have all the momentum in the world right now that should be on their way to becoming larger than life at the bare minimum. And every time they get momentum, Tony Khan just cuts their legs out from underneath them. Throws them to the wayside. Right when they get momentum, you don't see them for two or three weeks. Some of them two or three months. Or they're in some odd shitball fucking booking. Maybe they lose two or three matches in a row. Count how many tag team matches FTR has had on Dynamite in the last five months. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tag team. Not six-man tags. Not one-on-ones. A traditional tag team match featuring FTR in the last four or five months. You can probably count them on one hand tops. Ask yourself how many meaningful matches Wardlow has had on Dynamite since the MJF feud that should have catapulted him. When Orange Cassidy and Jungle Boy looked like they were about to be on top of the world, even for their size... Watch what happened to them on two separate occasions for Cassidy, by the way. And you could go on and on. (laughs) But instead of caring about his booking and what the fuck he's producing on the shows that he's promoting eight million times a podcast, he just wants to spend his whole day getting behind a microphone and grinning and acting like the the, 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 the geek in school that knows more than you do. He's got all answers to the test. He didn't have to cheat either. He just knows them all up here because he's so smart. And you don't know what he knows. And he sits there and he giggles. And he's got his little drink. I don't want to answer that. No. Because the, 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 I, cause I can't right now. Because I don't want to. Next question. Maybe. You'll see. Possibly. I don't want to talk about that. There's the interview. For one hour, that's what you'll get. Cut the damn shit, bro. A lot of people jumped on Ariel's fucking back on when he said his true feelings. But if you actually saw that podcast, you felt the anguish, the frustration steaming off a fucking Ariel throughout the entire fucking 60 to 90 minutes, whatever it was. You fucking felt this dude honestly getting more angry because... He was being disrespected on his own fucking show. Sports Illustrated, you're not just gonna just, just you could do are you not gonna mention CM Punk? Are you literally just never gonna fucking mention the guy's name? Cooties? I can't say it, cooties! There's no investigation. It's not against the fucking law. You are his fucking boss. Speak up! Grow a set. Anyway, guys. Uh, SmackDown tonight is taped. It is a taped show. I already went over all the result results. Spoilers. That was in a video that I put up a few hours ago. Check that out. Um, we went over that. The security issues that are going on right now in Saudi Arabia. The WWE talent and crew has flown. They are there now. They held a press conference. They already ate a big dinner with all the, the hierarchy in Saudi Arabia. And... Uh, all the pomp and circumstance, it's all happening right now. So the, the security measures are put in place. As of now, this event is going to go off as planned in the same venue that was it, that it was supposed to be. The setup is all set up, and they're ready to rock. Uh, security is, is a main topic, but everything looks to be okay as of now. Uh, security wise we went over that as well in earlier in the video and i hope to be with you guys tomorrow for the entire event maybe we could do a live stream watch along where bc is your lead commentator for the entire event be on this channel during crown jewel tomorrow man we'll spend the entire event live hopefully bc amplified top guy and i am out tony
Relax. Grab yourself a coffee. That's totally fine. Grab yourself a notebook. Get a couple of people with you and start brainstorming about some awesome storylines that you can present to us. Do not spend the rest of your night booking interviews for tomorrow. Take the day off, bro. Just be creative tomorrow. Deal? Awesome. Sincerely, all of us. BC. Check you.